Hello guys, welcome to another interesting video of problem of the day series Geeks for Geeks. In this particular video, I will explain the problem boundary traversal of a matrix. The problem is of easy level. Starting with the problem statement, so it says that you are given a matrix of dimension n cross m. The task is to perform boundary traversal on matrix in a clockwise manner. So let's say we are given a matrix here. So we have to perform the boundary traversal, right? And for this matrix, let's say the order is n cross m as given in the problem statement. n is basically representing the rows and m is representing the columns. Now we have to perform boundary order traversal in clockwise manner. So this is how clockwise manner looks like. Now, according to this particular uh, manner, first of all, we are going to print the first row. Then we have the last column here. Then we have last row here and then we have first column here, right? This is how we are going to print the boundaries only. See, we are concerned about boundaries. So we are not going to touch any value inside the matrix. So first of all, for this particular ex example, we are going to print the first row, right? So I have one, two, three, four for this particular example. Then I have last column. So I have eight, then 12, then 16. After this, I'll come to the last row. I have uh, 15, 14 and 13. So let me write 15, 14 and 13 here. After this, I have 9 and 5, right? So this is going to be the boundary order traversal in clockwise manner for the given example. Now guys, I hope the problem statement is clear to you. So let's talk about the solution now. Okay, so guys, I have written one example here and I have written the number of columns and rows as well. And for this particular example, see the approach is quite similar to what I have explained here, right? Very straightforward approach, like first we are going to print the first row, then the last column, then last row, then first column. But there is a catch in this particular approach. First of all, let me write the pseudocode so that you will get an idea about how we are going to implement this. So for this particular matrix, see guys, I have to print the first row first, but what I'll do is, I will print only these two values. After this, I'll start with this point and I'll print these two values. Then I'll start with this point. Then I'll print these two values and then I'll print these two values, right? I think this much looks more uh, like uh, optimal solution to me that I'm printing for two values from each direction because if I print the first three values, then I'll start with this point then I'll print only two values here, right? So let's make it symmetric and first of all, I'm going to start with four I equals to zero and I is smaller than N minus one. Okay, M minus one guys. First of all, we are concerned about column. So column is M and rows is N, right? M minus one, then I plus plus. Inside this, what I'll do is I'll only print the first row. So I'll say that, okay, answer dot add. I'm going to add the answer in a list, right? So answer dot add matrix of matrix of zero. I'm talking about zero row and ith column, right? This is going to print every particular, uh, like the value from every column so this is the first call zeroth column this is the first column this is how it is going to print now i have got these two values which is one and two now i'll start one more loop starting from this particular point so i'll say that okay now i equals to zero again then i is smaller than n minus one after this i plus plus right now see guys this is going to print me these two values n minus one like uh except this last value i am going to print every value so i'll say that answer dot add now guys there is one important thing to see that I'm only printing values from the last column, right? And last column is basically M minus one. So I'll say that, okay, matrix of whatever is the row. I'm iterating over every row and the last column. This is how I'm going to add the value, right? Now guys, now comes this particular part, which is the last row. So for the last row, I'm going to start from the back. This is right to left manner, right? Right to left. So how we can print in right to left? So I'll start with i equals to n. Okay, m minus one. This is m minus one row. Then i is greater than zero and i minus minus. Why I'm writing i is greater than zero, not equal to zero? Because I'm not concerned about this value for now. I will only print these values, like two values for this example. So answer dot add. As I'm talking about the last row, so matrix will have in the row side it will have n minus one and for column. It is going to iterate over the column, so I am writing i, right? After this comes the fourth part, which is i equals to n minus 1, because now I am starting from the last row, then I will move towards the first row, right? So I will say that, okay, i is greater than 0 again, and i minus minus. After this, I will say that answer dot add, I have matrix of uh, zeroth, okay, i row and zeroth column, right? This is how... I will perform the boundary order traversal of the given matrix. Now guys, 
this is the whole solution that you need to uh, perform once you have done this your task is done but there is a catch in this particular approach see this is going to give the wrong answer for some edge cases let me tell you those edge cases so let's say i have an example where n equals to 1 n equals to 1 so o m is whatever let's say m equals to 3 so this means that i'm going to have a single row and uh three columns so i'll have one two three here now guys very important thing to see is how it is going to perform the boundary tra order traversal it will first go this way then there is no any uh, other row so this is not going to print anything for the other row so this is uh going to print nothing for this particular case after this it is again going to iterate over the same row well this is the problem that we have so the output will be something like one two then three two right this is the output because i'm printing only two values so it will first print one two two values then from the back it will again print two values so guys this is the problem that we have with this particular approach we have a single uh, row right so how we can iterate over the same row again and again so in order to uh, like handle this case i will handle this case manually i'll write if my n is equal to one in this particular case i'm simply going to print these three values by a single loop for i equals to zero i small than n okay and then i plus plus inside this i can simply add matrix of uh, zero comma i right matrix of zero comma i like from every column i have to add the zero row. so answer dot add something like this now one more edge case is for m equals to one so for m equals to one i hope uh m equals to 1 case will be clear to you with this only because in m equals to 1 and n equals to let's say 3 so 1 2 3 and now it is going to iterate over the same column again like these two line are going to iterate over the same column so guys this is a uh, one more thing that we need to handle so i'll write else if m is equal to 1 so i will write 4 i equals to 0 then i is smaller than okay i think i have to write m here right after this i'll write n then i plus plus and inside this i'll simply say that answer dot add matrix of see guys now i'm concerned about every column so uh, every row so i'll write uh, i row and zeroth column because column is going to remain only one which is zeroth column right so guys this is how we can solve the problem for else case we will do this because we need at least two different rows and two different columns to do this particular task right so that it doesn't overlap the values now this is all thing that we need to do once you have done this your task is done just return answer right so guys talking about the time complexity so see we are first iterating n times then iterating m times so this is nothing but o of n plus m and for space complexity we are uh, using the extra space for storing the boundary order traversal right and apart from this we are not using any extra space so for that particular storing space the complexity is again going to be o of n plus m only right so guys this is the time and space complexity now let me show you the code quickly this is the code in c plus plus this is the code in python and i have the code in java as well right so guys uh, i hope the approach is clear to you like first we are declaring the answer then we are handling two cases this way they are these are the edge cases and then i'm performing the main task that we have right now guys this is the java code and this is the python code well this is all about this video i hope everything is clear to you guys don't forget to subscribe the channel if you like the explanation thank you